Welcome to another edition of Dog Talk and Coffee with me, Richard Hines. Okay. Oh. Here you come. Sit. Down. All right, welcome to another episode of Dog Talk and Coffee with me, Richard Hines. And today I have my big cup of coffee. <laughs> Not those little espressos that I love. <laughs> so, today's subject is going to be about obedience. And a lot of people ask me it all the time, how do you get that speed in obedience? <laughs> Down. Sit. Stand up. Front. Down. Then sit. Back. Down. Then come. Sit. Then back. Down. Then you come. Sit. Down. Sit. Down. Finish. Down. Sit. Does he come? Sit. Down. Down. And is it necessary? Okay, so let me first, because this leads into that. My own dogs, puppies, adults, whatever it's going to be, I personally start with food first. Positive. Okay? So, I want their base positively done because for me, I want a lot of flash and speed and power and enthusiasm. Okay? Where, as if I start with a client, most of my clients have done food before and the results are very weak and that is because it takes a lot of good skill and technical abilities to do positive obedience well, okay? It is easy to just go sit and give a treat, down and give a treat, okay? But it takes a lot of art and high skill, right, to get a dog the way I expect them to be in my system, okay? Anybody who out there has seen me, knows me, seen my past videos, down, sit, down, sit, finish, right, front, down, right? It's very fast, it's enthusiastic, it's precise, okay? And anybody that I take to my system that is going to be a trainer, Zoom, so for example, here, Michael, the one that I've been working with in France through Zoom, you know, through my instructional videos and one-on-one, -on -one, this is the kind of obedience that I expect. Six. Plot. Yes. Plot. Six. Plot. Plot. Yes. Right. Finish. Plot. Six. Plot. Come, 
Let's sit. Break. Good boy. Jogger. Let's sit. Good. Bed. Yes. Come. Let's sit. Good. Yes. Boy. Let's sit. Yes. Let's sit. Let's sit. Let's. Yes. Okay. Now, Michael's dogs here are still in the beginning, kind of, right? They need some polishing. They haven't really been doing obedience consistently. So this, what you're seeing here is the first time he's been doing obedience with them in months. So they're a little um, rusty, okay? But for being rusty... This is phenomenal stuff, right? But it's the speed and the fluency of the word that we tell them that they understand to do and differentiate from the words of what we're asking and quickly, making the brain fast, okay? So why is that important well when you teach obedience that way you keep dogs enthusiastic okay you keep them motivated you keep them driven they enjoy obedience they love the challenge of it okay and most people lack speed when they're working with their dogs even with food it's very rare that you you see people trainers able to get dogs to be that fast and do different things consistently in a row right with that level of speed and accuracy okay now I, and I go through this all the time okay where especially working dogs, the Shepherds, the Dutch Shepherds, the Malinois, okay, where their brains can be so fast when they have that high working genetic, but most owners are not fast enough mentally or physically, okay? So they'll go down and they ask for something and the dog does it and then walks away and starts going away and doing those things. And then the person gets ready to go do another command and they ask for something and when the dog's ready, sniffing now and he's checked out and comes over and, huh, what was that? And they go do it. And they'll give him a treat and it's very lackadaisical. It's, it's not an energy that is matching the dog. So, I always tell everybody, you must pick up and you need to get at it. That, sit down here, over here, back. you need to be ahead of it. You need to make the dog catch you in obedience. Not the dog go, oh, here we go again. Oh man, this person's so slow. Like he's killing me, right? And they take a treat, and the dog goes, okay, I'm leaving. Just let me know when you get that treat out of your pocket or your thing again, and you're ready to tell me something else when you're ready. But I'm going to go over here and do things, and I'll be back when you're ready. And that's what happens a lot, right? Most cases, the people are just not mentally fast enough and physically fast enough to keep up with these certain types of driven dogs. So we get okay obedience out of them, right? Nothing flashy, they do it, okay? And then you're just gonna get some people who hit the jackpot, right? Where just even somebody in the public who doesn't know anything about dog training and they're just going down fluffy and this and they get such a, a spirit enthusiastic poodle 
right, or a golden doodle, and without any real skill on the person's part, once the dog figures out that they're going to lean over and give them a treat, the dog starts anticipating very quickly. They're very enthusiastic, okay, with a certain type that happens. Now, the problem, though, with that is the dog will do that one command fast, like a down. But they don't, there's no pairing. Sit down, sit here, finish, right there. There's no linking of commands. It's just the one command they're good at, right? Knowing that it's coming. So it, it's a facade. It was an accident. Now, if that person was up on their game and was ready, let's go, sit, down, yes, come on, come, and keep the dog engaged and do your commands, right? And you got to make sure that your technical abilities and obedience are very good, okay? So it's not easy to do this level of obedience, this kind of obedience, well. It's rare you see it, okay? It also makes dogs for life do their commands very well, okay? Even when there's no food and no pressure, like an e-collar or whatever, you know, added to its end game. So for me, right? We get this fast, enthusiastic, I want to see happy, energized. Yes, tell me, tell me, tell me. And then I start applying when they're really good at all this. Little e-collar pressure to just make it mandatory. Give them reward while adding some e-collar to it where it's not bothering them. They're just doing it and they're doing it just as fast the enthusiasm, just letting know there will be some pressure now because, of course, positive trainers, you know, <laughs> want to blow this off, right? Like it doesn't exist. And of course it exists. That if there's no pressure applied, you're just getting a performance dog, a circus animal, that will perform only when it knows it's the time for reward, okay? Like, again, I buy tons of sport dogs. Got to redo them, put real protection, real obedience, because it's not real, okay? I got to redo everything for real life. I'm a real life guy. I'm not, that's why you don't see me do sports, because I don't want to waste time going to do sports and doing things that don't apply to real life. The obedience doesn't apply to real life. The protection doesn't apply to real life in Schutzen or any of the sports. So I don't want to waste my time doing things that don't apply to life. And I have to redo. But I have no choice when I buy shepherds. <laughs> so when we get them, they're ball done, food done, Right, and it's every time, it's very rare that we buy one, even with titles on them, that they ever listen, right, without a ball or a toy. It's rare, okay? I know even if it's the highest levels of titles, I'm going to have my hands full. So I tell my breeders, please don't give me titles. I want the least training you have, right, because I don't want to redo everything. I need a dog for real life. I don't play in, in, you know, the fake land. Okay? And I know the public really doesn't understand this. That how could obedience be different real life to sport? It's very different. Right? Protection to real protection. Very different. Right? The exercises don't even apply to real life. The, the, it's a game. Okay, got to redo everything, the exercises, the, the mentality, but it's all positively done mainly, okay? So, to hold that, you need some pressure, 
so that when you're out in life with your dog, the dog just doesn't go, yeah, you know, no treat, no ball, mm, obedience not my thing. You know, I'll wait till we get home and then you pull the treats out and the ball and then I'll, I'll, I'll probably work for you if I'm in the mood. Okay, and that's what people get stuck with. Over and over and over and over. Now, you may get lucky if a dog's been working for years and over and over and positive, 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 but it's a certain type of dog, a rare dog that just listens all the time, never having pressure. Okay, that's rare. That's, and you also want to be cautious, right, when it, that dog's life depends on it, that you're not gambling its life. That's why pressure also comes in in the later stages to finish up obedience. Because if we ever need something to save that dog's life, we want to make sure it complies. It's not a mood, right? That the dog right now is just not in the mood. That can't exist. Then we have a dog who is partially trained. Depends on the environment, depends on his mood, depends on, right? Ask anybody who's gone through this positive training when people come around if they can control the dog. 99% of dogs that just go through positive training, the people cannot control them in the environments, in all environments. The dog will only listen depending, okay? So, it's very important that pressure gets laid in the end to a, to a degree to make reliability, okay? Now, but going back to purely positive for me in the beginning, Getting that flair, getting that enthusiasm, getting that style, getting that attitude. That's what it's about, okay? But when I work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, I rarely do food. Because it's going to be torture for me to try to teach them good technique, okay? Now, if they just want things like sit and a very simple sit and down, that kind of thing, it's not my thing. But I understand it's functional. Most people in the world don't want flashy, fancy, they don't care, right? For me, as an expert, and I'm driven by performance, right? It drives me to get high levels of things because it shows great skill, right? That is when you know somebody's got skill and it drives me to get the best out of my dogs, to, to make them the happiest and highly skilled, okay? So for me, I don't settle for anything but the speed and the fancy and the flair and the, okay? But it also for the long term of lasting, the memory, lifetime of reliability. Again, then adding a little pressure to it to make sure that's the case. Okay, but again, it's, it's work with somebody who doesn't want flair, doesn't care. They just want the dog to do things. We're going remote, right, without food. The only one I'll do food with for the client is down, food first and then to down with the e-collar, okay? But the sits, the comes, the stays, bed, those things, you know, will be done remotely. Maybe bed I'll do positive first and then add e-collar. So, because we have so many classes in a program, people don't want to work hard at this. Right, 25 years I've been doing this. I, I, it's the majority of my clients, right? They don't want to work hard at this. They just want the dog to do something when they tell them. They don't want the flare, they don't care. They don't want to work at that. Just if I say sit, just sit. If I say down to you, just down. They're not looking for a show, right? A circus act of all style and this and that, 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 that right? They're regular average people, okay? 
and I see tons and tons and tons and tons of trainers who do obedience. And it's very basic, right? And even their own dogs, it's very, but that's okay, right? They, it's okay. It's my style and I want the best of my dogs, okay? And if a client wants to go there and they're willing to put the work in, I'll do it. I'll take them there. Okay, it's going to be a lot more effort. It's a, it takes a lot more to get them to be skilled, and stay ahead of the dog, and stay good with energy. And uh, so, me preferably, I'd rather go e collar with them and just get this over with. Okay, and now people will say, but Richard, we can get the spirit with the e collar too. Through your method, we've got the spirit. Absolutely, you can still get fast right through my method of e-collar. Good boy. Come, sit. I'm just pairing things though and getting more fancy when I start with the positive first. But absolutely, if you just go straight e collar, you can get speed, right? Really good, precise for sure, okay? But through positive, I want that, okay? So that is why when, you know, I also hear, oh, this positive is positive. We go positive. We teach people positive. We teach positive. And I've seen all the schools. I've seen firsthand all the schools that teach positive. And it's rough. It's rough to watch, right? Because come on, come on. And they're doing things. And the dog's like, even for food and highly motivated, they look, the dog looks like he's suffering right because the owners are so slow and it's just kind of a mess right and the dog might do things but sluggish and it looks <laughs> and this is with food okay so if you are interested i have positive instructional videos on my platform my website teaching how to get that done and do the commands correctly with the positive, to get that speed, to get the technique, okay? And then to mix commands, very important. Sit down, stand if you want, finish, to bed, to here, to come, to stop there, right? All types of different patterns, mixing all these commands together as one routine really drives dogs, motivates them, makes them think. Remember, in human world, dogs really lack a lot of mental stimulation. Most people just let dogs live, right? They just let them live. They just live with them and just let them live. Give them something here and there to play with or whatever but they're never challenging the dog, never stimulating their minds, never making them motivated, giving them something to, to you know, look forward to, to, <laughs> okay? And dogs thrive on that most, okay? You're gonna get some really lazy ones with no energy and they're just not that kind of dog and they could care less and those are the ones that are perfect e-collar candidate all the way. Okay, ones that don't have such motivation or you can't motivate them because a lot of dogs that appear like they don't have it, you can still pull it if you have good technique and get the right motivators. But you're going to get a lot that don't have that motivator or that engine, right, to do positive obedience or be motivated with anything, steak, chicken, this, okay. So... Those ones are perfect, perfect for the e-collar. Just get it done, okay? So, 
get, takes a lot of skill, really good technique, then knowing how to combine commands properly, fading the food, variabling the rewards to get the proper performance, going from every time to when to treat properly at what moment during what command. So there's a lot that goes into that to do well. Okay. So yes, love the positive game, love the positive obedience. Me personally, I do it with all my puppies and dogs as a base, but to do well, it does take somebody to be energetic, to be fast-minded, sit, come here, step, right, to match the dog, to be ahead of it, or else you're, you're going to get so-so results, okay? And that's also to why most trainers themselves stick with just basic old obedience, even with their own dogs. Down, he downs. It's good. He did it. You know, lacks flair, lacks anything, but hey, he did it, right? Come, he comes, he moseys, he gets there. You know, at least he's doing it. Stay, and at least he sat there and he stays, right? So that's not my thing. I want, right? But hey, we're, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, their style, okay? A lot of trainers I know, most people I know, are not that motivated to get that out of their dogs. They don't care. Even most trainers I've met don't care. Okay? So it takes a special touch and special skill and technique to get dogs to have that kind of thing. So I wanted to answer that question because people always ask me, Richard, what do you do? E collar first or food? Me, food, my clients, e-collar. Okay? And that is the reason why. So, again, if you're interested, I have the instructions of teaching the positive of how to do down, come, sit, stay, go to your bed, and then have an e-collar series as well to either just do the commands with e-collar or touch up with the e collar you can just use it for that. All right? So, I hope that clears it up. I'm Richard Hines, and I will see you on the next video.